And Jesus healed you today. Welcome, beautiful Harvest Field International family from all over the world. Um, we are live from the Netherlands and we are so thrilled to be back with you again. And uh, we hope you will just invite people around you. Maybe you can share this link of the uh, YouTube video or maybe on Facebook you can share. If you're watching, just let your friends know that you are watching because we believe that today will be a special day. We have John and Catherine back with us. They're here, uh, well-known friends from the ministry here in Holland. And um, they are going to uh, bring their message of, um, about intimacy and identity. And uh, there's so much going on in the world, like in the midst of everything, in the midst of the turmoil, we know there's only one king. We know there's only one um, God that is like in control and he wants to be with us. He wants to be intimate with us. Even Jesus in his time on earth, he had these moments of being fully revealed and be, being fully concealed and be with the Father in his intimate place. And today we will find that intimate place in worship. We will find it in the, in the preaching. We will um, help you to find that place at your house. So right now, we just um, encourage you to um, relax and to really invite the Holy Spirit in this moment in your house. Like to put away all the distractions and to be uh, part of what we are um, yeah, feeling here because we believe that what is happening here in worship um, through this uh, amazing technique online through the internet will be uh, something that is really manifest in your house. Tamara, what's on your heart for this service? I just would love to pray. I would love to pray for our American brothers and sisters. Um, I don't know if you're happy with the choices that are made or if you're not happy with it. But I bless your heart with joy. I bless your heart with new faith. I bless your heart with um, peace. That you will know that God is always good and he will always find a way. And America, I just bless you in the name of Jesus. Yes. With God's righteousness, with God's justice. Mm -hmm. With his love. With his power. And Lord, I want to declare that the government is on your shoulders. Yes. The hearts of kings are in your hands. Amen. The nation rage, the earth is groaning Amen. for you to move across this land. Yes. And thank you, Lord, that this earth is groaning too for the brothers and sisters to stand up in their identity and in intimacy with you. And I pray that this teaching today and the worship today will open up our hearts on a new level to a new hunger to meet with you, God, to be in a place of intimacy, in a place where we know who we are because we know who you are and how you look at us and how you think of us and how you feel about us. Lord, I pray for a revelation power today 
It opens new doors, new levels of knowing who you are and knowing who we are and what we can do in this time. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's worship. Open up my eyes in one 
voice You have led me through the fire In darkest nights You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend Sing of your love forever. 
Surround me with your love and care. You promise I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Your goodness is running after us. Father, Jesus, you are our shepherd, our good shepherd. And at the time when you were missing that one sheep, you didn't go to bed. You didn't say, oh, well, it's just one, I don't care. No, you stayed up. You went out to seek the lost. And you shouted, where are you? Where are you? My child, where are you? Where are you? I won't give up until I find you. Until I find you and bring you back. Bring you back home where you belong. You are meant to be my child. You are meant to be my daughter. You are meant to be my son. And I won't give up on you. Even when you gave up on me, I won't give up on you because I am your father and I love you. You are my child. I created you and I won't give up on you. For I spoke a word. For I spoke a word. You were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. For I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me.
There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't
this me, for I am your God. And I will help you, and I will strengthen you, and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. and the band for leading us into the presence of the Lord and God will not leave us when we stop worship he will be with us forever he will be always around us and we can uh, feel this intimate relationship with him and today John and Catherine Bach will uh, preach about intimacy and identity before we gonna listen to them I just want to share a bit about our vision and the next step we want to take next week when we look into our uh, streams online, for example, like I um, look into our YouTube, um, stream, we see some of the, uh, of the um, people are watching from uh, the Philippines, from Brazil, from Oman, England. And uh, for example, someone is asking, please pray for my family. And we really want to, um, want to be more connected with you of course we have a team of people uh, who are reading the comments and praying into the prayer subjects that are written down there but we want to be more in contact with you last weeks and months we've been speaking about ecclesia and the the, the um, movement we believe in the harvest that we believe that we are going to bring in and it's only necessary that the two or three people are together and they are here together and they are with um, yeah, with each other and reaching out to the world. And maybe you are in your home right now with a few people. And maybe you know about other people who are also there and watching. And we want to invite you to be uh, a participant in our service. So uh, we already said it earlier and, uh, and next week we will going to take the step to introduce the Zoom call into our service. So some of you already uh, send us an email and ask for the Zoom link. And if you didn't do that, please send us an email. Send, send me an email at rob at harvestfieldinternational.com. So rob at harvestfieldinternational.com. If you just send us an email and you ask for the Zoom link, maybe next week you will be seen on big screen here on stage. Uh, and we will turn this stage into a, a big living room. And we want to connect with you. So Matthias, our pastor, he will uh, be with us again next week. And um, he will just maybe pray over you and over your situation. Or maybe we have a, like this moment of, of prophesying over you or singing over you. Because we really believe in this connection that we want to uh, pour into your life and make your home uh, a house of glory of God. So please uh, join us next week and invite your friends to watch and send us an email uh, to be part of this um, uh, people who are gathering around in Zoom and, and are really like um, in, this, uh, in this connection with you. So um, yeah, maybe John and Catherine, you can just come up. Uh, and um, before I, I, I give them, uh, the opportunity to share their heart I just want to invite you to also uh, bless us in a financial way like we want to build a studio where we can just um, uh, stream and uh, set up this this, um, this this living room setting so if you want to want to bless us financially if you have the opportunity to give uh, please uh, um, yeah go to PayPal and uh, and donate through PayPal donate at gospelmusicfestival.nl or use the, um, the account that's on the screen. Now I just give you a few uh, seconds to give the donation and then John and Catherine Bach are coming up on stage.
thank you for your generosity and uh, connecting with us and giving freely we will use your donation really to bring in the harvest and on stage right now John and Catherine are with me welcome um, I do want to pray over you and maybe you uh, just take uh, uh, time to introduce yourself uh, because people uh, here in Holland they know you you've been uh, here on stage earlier with us also in this international service so maybe you remember uh, when you have watched before summer you've seen them on stage in this prophetic uh, ministry they have and uh, sharing the prophetic but now they will share their hearts about uh, identity and intimacy and Lord I thank you for uh, being so close being so involved in our lives Lord thank you for your um, your Holy Spirit that's always around us, that's working in us. And thank you for leading us in this moment, Lord. And we just want to open up the, the realms of your glory over the homes that are watching. And we really believe that you have something specific for people who are watching, Lord. And we just give you all the glory and have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Good afternoon, I'm Catherine and this is John and I'd like to take a minute to introduce us and I'd like to start with a little story. About a hundred years ago, my grandfather emigrated from Switzerland to the United States and that's where he met my grandmother whose parents had also emigrated from Switzerland. So my parents um, have the Swiss and actually Northern German background and my whole life I grew up thinking Europe is a great place, and especially Switzerland. And so when I had the chance and I graduated from high school, I got to go to a Bible school in southern Germany, right on the Bodensee or in Lake Constance. And that's where I got to meet John, who was from the Netherlands. And actually, he, um, yeah, he didn't get into medical school that year. So that was his, yeah, option to do that for the year. But you see how God works in amazing ways of bringing people together we got to become very good friends and those were the days when you write letters to each other to stay in touch and sometimes a long distance phone call and now fast forward in 1990 we got married and 30 years later we're still married and loving each other and we have four wonderful young adult children now our oldest son is 26 we have a 24 year old son 22 year old daughter and an 18 year old daughter and just recently, our 24-year-old son got married to a young woman from Bulgaria. And our daughter is dating a young man from Scotland. So as far as the nations are concerned, we feel connected with the nations. And we feel really honored and blessed to serve here today. And we pray that we can have a, even though it's through the live stream and everything, but a good connection and a good time together. And it's a privilege for us to be here today and share what we have on our hearts with you. And I want to thank the worship team because every song carried like the heart of the message. Um, we're talking about intimacy and identity, but there's a direct link, and that's what we will explain to you, to the goodness and the faithfulness of God. Proverbs 23, verse, uh, verse 7 says, As a man thinks in his heart, so he is. Your mind and what you think determines who you are, your identity. But especially, and that's what we want to focus on today, what you think about your God will determine who you are and will deter determine your identity. And we want to start with a story, a story from our own lives that will make that clear. So about 14, year, 14 years ago, our 18-year-old daughter had just started school, and that's group one here in the Netherlands. And when the, the children get to go home for lunch, and the teacher usually goes out with the children and waits with them on the sidewalk for them to be picked up by the parents, and that's at 12 o'clock, usually every day. So one day, we were actually together. It was actually normally my work day, and it was John's day to take care of the kids. And we had a meeting at another school for the high school for our oldest son. 
And we looked at our watches, and it was about 12 o'clock right then, and we were on the other side of town. And we ended that meeting quickly, and we got in the car, and we thought, oh, Rosalie. And normally the teacher waits and makes sure all the children are safe, so we still tried to hurry, but we thought, okay. We got there as quickly as we could. So when we got closer, we saw Rosalie standing out there alone, and, and so John said, I'll park the car quick. You run over to her. So I got out of the car and I ran to her and she was standing there perfectly calm and she actually had a surprised look on her face and she said to me, what are you doing here, mama? Today is Papa's day to pick me up. He said he'd come and she was perfectly calm, so. So just imagine that four-year-old girl being perfectly peaceful, even though she was all alone for probably about 15 minutes, which is long for a four-year-old, and she said, Papa is coming. Right. And what she believed about her Papa determined how she could stand in her circumstances. If she would not have known that I would come and get her, she might have panicked, like many four-year-olds would do when they're waiting in school. And what you think about your heavenly father, your heavenly Papa, your heavenly daddy, will determine what your stance in life is, how you stand in life, how you deal with your circumstances. What you think about God determines who you are in your life. Romans 12 verse 2 is a very key verse in the Bible. It says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may know I see another translation here, but that you may know um, what is the good, acceptable or pleasant, it says in other translations, and perfect will of God. What it actually says there is that your mind needs to be renewed primarily so you can know your God and that you can know his will. Because if you understand who your God is, who your daddy is, who your papa is, and you understand who his will is, his will and his character go together, that will change your perspective on yourself, on him, on life. And I love it that it says that his will is good and pleasing and perfect. If your picture of the will of God is anything less than pleasing, good and perfect, then your mind needs to be transformed. Because God's will is always good, always perfect, and always pleasant. As a family doctor, I talk to a lot of people um, in my practice, and I see a lot of suffering. And I have in my practice quite a few people with a Muslim background. I love them. They're so sincere and devout. But when things go bad in their lives, what they will say very often to me is, Doctor, that's, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, that's inshallah, it's the will of God. And actually, a lot of Christians believe the same, that whatever happens in their life, good or bad, it's the will of God. And you just have to flow with it. But I believe that God, especially in this time, in this season, more than ever, says, I want you to get a new picture of what my will is. I am a God that is relational. And when pain happens in your life, you don't just have to say, this is just what has to happen, it's God's will. The beautiful thing about our Lord Jesus Christ is that he did not only take our unrighteousness and our sin, but every bit of pain and sickness and suffering that we have to go through, he has already been there, every bit of it. And even more than that, he has overcome it. And he wants to learn, he wants us, us to learn, he wants to teach us to live from that position and to have a new picture of what it is, the will of God in your life. He is truly a God of relationship, of love and interaction. And actually, this is even bigger, this is so big, I think many Christians don't understand yet. He wants to involve us in his plans. 
You know, many times his will is not already set and that's how it's going to happen. But he will talk to his children and say, this is what I'm planning to do. Will you pray? Will you talk to me? And actually, when you look at the Bible, you see there's several examples where believers, people who had a relationship with God, changed the mind of God. Can you believe it? So when you pray for your nation, for your family, your church, pray and say, Lord, your will is good and perfect and pleasant. And intercede and God will listen to you and even sometimes adjust his plans in response to your prayer. He wants you to pray. And there's two main pictures of his relationship with us that are used in the Bible a lot. And the first one I love is the relationship between a husband and a wife or two lovers. That picture comes back in the Bible a lot. Actually, Jesus says, when I come back on earth, I will come back for my church, my children, my believers. And he calls them his bride. And it's such a beautiful picture. And also in our relationship, we make our decisions in a relationship and in love. And that's the heart of God too. And the other picture of the relationship between us and God is, that is very often used is that between a father and a child. And I love both pictures because they're so warm and so intimate. So who you are is primarily defined by what you think and know of your God. And maybe I shouldn't say as much who you are is important, but whose you are, who you belong to, is what would define your identity. And what that means, just think of our daughter Rosalie, is that your circumstances, like her standing all alone by the school, she could have thought, where are they? Your circumstances do not define your picture of who God is. But who your God is will define your response to your circumstances. I want to repeat that. Your circumstances, whatever happens in your life, Maybe hard things, maybe good things. They do not define your picture of who God is. But who your God is and what you believe him to be will define your response to your circumstances. Just like Rosalie, her response was, I can be peaceful, my papa is coming. And the enemy, the devil, the Bible shows, all the way from the beginning is contesting with this. He is fighting that. And I want to just take you back very briefly to the beginning in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, when God created men and everything was good. There was no evil in the world yet. And then the enemy, in the shape of a snake, came to Adam and Eve, the first man and his wife, and he said to them, has God not said, you should not eat from that tree, because if you eat from it, you will die. But... That is not true. God knows that if you eat from that tree, you will not die, but you will be better. You will be like him. And actually what he did right from the start is saying God is not trustworthy. He tried to change their thinking about who God was. And immediately when their thinking about God changed, their actions changed, their desires changed, their reaction to the circumstances changed. It literally says in some of the translations, and then they saw that the fruit of the tree was desirable to eat before it wasn't even attractive. But when your image of God changes and you don't trust in his goodness anymore, everything becomes different. We, li we live in special times. We believe it is the time of the great harvest where many people will come to find Jesus as their savior. Yet also, it is a time of a worldwide pandemic, which means that nations and individuals and groups and even churches are isolated. I also, we also believe that this is the time that Jesus is preparing his church for him to come back. He's purifying the church. And actually what he wants is to make us stronger in our identity, in who we are in him, and in draw us into intimacy with him. And in order to get to that place, we need to know that he is good. We need to know that he's good. And I mean to know 
that he is good. Psalm 34 says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are those that trust in him. Mm -hmm. Another translation says, blessed are those that hide in him. Mm -hmm. Trusting in him is like hiding in him. How intimate we can be with God and how we can stand in our identity as the bride or the son of God the sons and daughters of God, has everything to do with how we believe him to be. Mm -hmm. And there's two short stories I want to share with you, and then I'll hand it over to Catherine again. One is from the Bible. We believe God gave this to us over the last few weeks. A few weeks ago, our whole family was sick with COVID. And the hardest thing was not even being sick, but was being isolated for two weeks. First, even part of our family was in one part of the house and the not sick part in the other part of the house. It was horrible. Mm -hmm. But being isolated from friends, family, not being able to go to the store. And in those days, I asked the Lord to speak to us. And a friend of us, a prophetic friend of us, sent a message which touched our hearts deeply. And it's actually a message from the Bible. It's from Song of Solomon, a very special book. It's basically a love song a love poem in the Bible, seven chapters. And it's basically about God loving his, his bride, the church, I believe. It's a prophetic picture of that. And in chapter one, she's on one side of the wall in the garden and he's on the other side and he calls her out. He says, come, show me your beauty, show me who you are. And she doesn't even dare to get out. But in chapter seven, they sing together about their love that is so big that it's even stronger than death. The picture of Jesus, mm -hmm. who even through death, defeated death and came to new life and brought new life to us through his love for us. But there's one very special chapter, one strange chapter in there, and that's the chapter he sent, chapter 5. Maybe you should read it later. As the lady, the bride, let's call her the bride-to-be, is ready to go to bed and she has her nightgown on, you could say, there's a knock at the door. And she knows that's her, that it is her lover that is there. And she gets all excited, but she's not dressed decently, so she needs to put on a gown and shoes and everything, or whatever they were wearing, sandals. And as she gets to the door, her lover is gone. And I feel that there's a prophetic significance in that. I think we live in a season where sometimes it seems that when the... The groom is almost there and you hear his knock on the door and you go to the door and he's gone. And even then, she's so excited about him and she knows him and she loves him, she goes out in the nighttime into the city. I don't know if you've ever read it, but it's, it's, it's very striking. And in the city, she walks on those city walls and the watchmen on the wall, they harass her, they wound her, they take her rope off of her there's different explanations about that. I'm not going to go into that now. But the story touched my heart because I feel like God was saying some of my children feel like that. They feel like suddenly, where is my Jesus? Where is my God? And even as they're searching for him and they're left, they feel alone, they are wounded. But you know what I love about Song of Solomon? If you keep reading in there, there is not one trace in her heart of doubting her lover. The story goes on where she sings about how wonderful he is, how great he is. You know what? This is a perfect example of what we're saying today. Her image, what she believed about her lover, made her respond differently even when there was suffering she did not understand because she knew who he is. She knew who he was. And I wanna make it more personal Over 20 years ago, when I became a doctor, I was in training to become a doctor, I knew I was called to be a doctor from when I was about five years old. And I was full of faith. I knew my God. I knew he called me for this profession. I was excited about the day I could help people. And now I was a general doctor specializing. And as I was doing that, um, something really tough happened. I prayed almost every day, Lord, help me to make right diagnosis. And God very often helped me. 
help me really find the key to healing for people. And one day I got to treat a man and I missed, um, yeah, misdiagnosed him. And it had a very serious consequence. Because the day after, when I came back to my practice, I found out that he had died. And when I found out that he had died, um, a whole lot of things started happening. I talked to the family, and in the end it wasn't really my fault, but still, I felt like my God wasn't there when I really needed him. I asked him every day to make me a good doctor, and now I didn't make a right diagnosis, and this man died, and on top of it, he left his daughter an orphan, because his wife had already died, and it broke my heart. But what happened after that, which I first didn't realize, is that my picture of who my God was changed. And every day I went to work, I started going with a different attitude. I'm like, what's going to happen today? If God didn't help me that day, why wouldn't he not help me today? Or why would he help me today? I started becoming fearful, even depressed. I started dreading going to work. And at some point during this period, we visited my grandmother who had gone through the Second World War. She'd seen lots of suffering, lost two of her children, her husband, her house, everything. Yet she was a woman of faith. She'd gone through her struggles. And when we visited her, she saw something was different. And she called me on the phone shortly after. And she said, John, I need to talk to you. Catherine was with me. She said, John, ever since you were a little boy, you had a gift of childlike faith. You would trust your God in anything. And she said, even some of my pain and my wounds were healed when I, as a little child, would sit behind the organ. We, I grew up in a Dutch Reformed family, and you'd go to church with a church organ. I'd sit behind the organ, and I'd sing with my whole heart, I trust you, Lord. You love me. And she said, when you would sing that, it would bring healing to my heart. And she said, now, John, you have lost your childlike faith. And God says to you, I want you to choose to trust me again. And I broke out into tears. You can almost feel it now still. I went on my knees and I cried and cried. I hadn't cried for... I'd never seen him cry like that before. <laughs> and I said, God, I will choose to trust you again. I don't understand what happened, but I will choose to believe that you are good. I will choose to believe that you've called me for this profession. I will choose to believe that you'll be with me, mm -hmm. even if, though there might be no answer. And actually, that choice was a huge switching point in my life. My joy came back, actually very quickly in the days after. My peace came back. Mm -hmm. And today I can still serve the Lord with joy in my profession as a doctor. So, in this season of waiting for our groom, for our lover, some of us might go through things like this. And the enemy wants to tell you that God is not trustworthy, that he's not true to his promises, or that he's failing you, or he just wants you to go to sleep and forget about your passion for him. But actually, God wants to use this season for you to get to know him better and to purify, purify your faith and make it stronger like he did to my faith in this season of crisis. And as we talk today and as John has shared so much, there might be some people that are watching that, that um, you hear about it, but it's more like you're looking from the outside and you're hearing about a loving God or sometimes you pray but today we really want to make it also very clear that you can make a choice to say yes to Jesus. That he came for you, he died for you, he rose again, and that um, he's knocking at the door of your heart and he will not push his way in. The door handle is on the inside and you get to say yes for yourself. And there's some who know about God, or we talk about our daughter who knew her father, that she knew that she knew but that you have the choice to say yes to Jesus. And we'd love to give a chance today, and maybe it will be somebody watching this later, um, that you have the chance to say yes to Jesus and also 
please write to the Harvest Fields International or to send a comment and let them know or to share with somebody around you and let them know about your choice. We, we, we'd love to pray with you now and we'd also like to pray for some more things. And before we pray, what I want to share still is if you would have asked me in that hard season of my life, do you believe in God? Do you believe in Jesus? I would have said yes. Do you believe that Jesus will come back? Yes. Do you believe that he loves you? Yes. But there was one part of my life where basically I was not trusting Jesus anymore. I didn't realize it at first. I trusted him in lots of areas of my life, but I didn't trust him to help me to be a good doctor anymore. And I started taking care of myself in that area. I wasn't gonna let, let him, I wasn't gonna let him fill me again. So I was more careful with patients and I would do, do more lab work on them and all kinds of stuff. But behind that was a lack of faith in who my God would be for me in that area of my life. So often it might be just one part of your life where you might have closed your heart off because of disappointment, because of pain, or just because of questions you have. But just like God said to me, and he's saying every day to us, He's saying to you, will you choose again to trust me? Mm -hmm. Because primarily, faith, trusting God, is an act of the will. I discovered it that day. I thought I can't trust God anymore, I've been hurt. But faith is an, ask, uh, is, is, is a, is an act of the will in the first place, not an emotion. Not like, I feel like I trust him. Primarily, it's an act of the will. And the beautiful thing about God is, when you take that step and says, yes, Lord, I will trust you with all of my life, then he will reply to that and give you faith, like he did to me. Mm -hmm. After that, after I made that choice, faith was back. And there's this story in the Bible where this father, um, I love it, well, I love that story. His son falls on the ground and is sick, and Jesus' disciples, Jesus, they can't help him. And, and Jesus asks the man and says, do you believe, do you have faith that I can heal your boy? And I love the, the answer that the man gives. He says, yes, I believe, but help my unbelief. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's what I'm talking about. God says, will you make a choice to believe and whatever you lack in faith, I will then supply for you. But you have to make that step. And I love it. And we want to end with that Bible verse before we pray with you from Revelations chapter 3. There it says that Jesus himself, and actually I love this because it's written to a church in Revelation, the church of Laodicea. It's, it's written to believers because very often we think, and it's true, people who don't believe in Jesus yet need to accept Jesus into their life by faith. But this is written to believers. And they've become lukewarm. And Jesus says, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. And if you open by faith the door to me, I will come in and dine with you. And I love that because dining is such a picture of intimacy, especially in that culture. You wouldn't have dinner, have a meal with someone if you didn't really love them. And Jesus says, if you open that door and to a believer who already knows him, but open that part of your heart again where I need to enter in again. I will come in and dine with you. I'll be intimate with you. And I'll restore your faith. I'll restore your identity. Will you trust me and choose to trust me even when it seems like your lover, the groom, has disappeared? And even when there's pain or disappointment or just when you've lost sight of him. So we'd like to take a few minutes and pray with you. And maybe after the service today, it might mean going out on a walk or going to another room in your house and just spending some time with God or even writing in a prayer journal and just take what the Holy Spirit is speaking to you now, but also in this day and in this coming week, in this period, just be asking, what are you saying to me? Also, what do I need to release? What do I need to surrender? What, where am I off in what I believe about you that is not who you are? And he has incredible gifts for you for this day. Let's pray together. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for who you are, that you are so loving, 
that you are that you've given everything thank you for giving Jesus to die for our sins thank you Jesus that you rose again that you paid the price thank you that for those right now that you say yes I agree with this prayer yes I want to ask Jesus into my life just pray along and you can also pray in your own words to say yes Jesus will you please forgive my sins will you come into my life Will you please fill me with the Holy Spirit? And as you're watching this behind the screen somewhere, just want you to open your hands mm -hmm. and say, Jesus, I want to receive mm -hmm. you. And to make a choice again to say, Jesus, I open my heart to you mm -hmm. all the way. Will you come in and dine with me? And I pray for those that know God is speaking to them because in the suffering and in the pain and in the disappointment they've lost their picture of who God really is a God of perfect goodness whose will is perfect pleasing and good Father and I pray that you'll touch their hearts and reveal to them who you are again restore their identity and he's asking you will you say to me will you say yes to me I choose to trust you today again I might not have the answers, but I will choose to believe that you are good. You can pray along with me and say, Lord, I choose to believe that you are good. And I choose to trust you. And Jesus, I ask you to come and minister. Holy Spirit, I ask you to come and minister. And bring your healing where it's needed. And restore again the joy of your salvation, as it says in the Psalms. The beautiful joy of your salvation. Restore again intimacy. We pray also, Father, in the living rooms at home now, you'll not only heal hearts, but also heal bodies, heal minds, renew minds. We thank you for you are, for who you are. You are so trustworthy and you are so good. We want to just sing about your goodness and tell the world about your goodness. Your word says that the creation is groaning and waiting for the revelation of the sons of God. Sons of God are those that know. Sons and daughters of God are those that know that their God is good. They carry his, his inheritance and they walk in a deep conviction of who they are. Actually, I should say of whose they are. And we bless you to receive that right now. Father, I pray that you'll come with your spirit of sonship, your spirit of adoption and take away our orphan heart, our orphan spirit. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing and for your touch. Thank you that you made it possible, Jesus. And I pray right now for open hands, like where, there, where you feel like I can trust God with that, that, and that, but that area I need to take care of myself. And I pray today for open hands, for a new surrender of 100% of trust, and of faith and even of healing where there's been trauma healing where there's been trauma holy spirit we invite you to come for deep healing for renewal of the thinking thank you father amen, amen. Yes. Wow. Amazing message. Be blessed with the knowledge of the love of God. And from this place, we, uh, we finish this meeting. And uh, again, I invite you to, uh, to stay connected. Um, like us on Facebook. If you're watching on, uh, on YouTube, we also have a Facebook page, Harvest Fields International. So find us on Facebook and like. Uh, our page so you uh, you will hear and you will read from uh, from our next steps we will take and if you want to be part of the zoom call we will have uh, next week in our service uh, we already during the service we uh, we got some people who were sending an email uh, please send your email to uh, uh, rob that's rob at harvestfieldsinternational.com See you next week. We will uh, be more connected with you through a Zoom call. We will build this stage uh, and we will uh, rearrange this and uh, we will uh, broadcast from our living room to be connected with your home.
be blessed and have a beautiful week. See you next week at Harvestfield International.